To be able to iterate through the items of an array, we need to learn a different type of loop, the for each loop. So let's jump straight into it. I need to use the for each keyword with parentheses, and inside the parentheses, I declare a local variable. This variable will represent a member of a collection, and that collection is declared after the word in. So basically what we're saying is for each number in the result collection, which in our case is an array of integers, we're going to run the code block. So one of the biggest differences between the for each loop and the for loop is that we don't define the amount of times that the loop will run. That's dictated by the size of the collection. So in our case, the loop will run two times, since we know in advance that our collection has two members. And we're going to print the number using string interpolation. So let's run the app again and see what happens. And we can see the numbers now, which means that we can successfully access the items of the collection. But now we have another problem to solve. In this example, we have the numbers 30 and 45. And if I divide 30 by 45, I still don't get an integer. So what I'm going to try to do is to create two random numbers repeatedly until the division between them results in an integer. And that's the perfect case for another type of loop, the while loop. So let's create a while statement. We need to start with the word while. And in between parentheses, we need our condition. What this means is, while this condition is true, we are going to execute the code block. And our condition will be the division of the first number by the second number is a number with decimals. When we use the percentage operator for a division between two integers, the result is the remainder. So if we divide 5 by 4, for example, using the percentage operator, the result is 1. And that means that if the remainder is 0, the result of a division between those two numbers is an integer. So in this loop, every time we satisfy the condition, we're going to regenerate the numbers. And of course, I need to run the loop before I assign the numbers to the array, otherwise the array will contain the numbers initially generated. Before we test if it works, let's create the loop in the division game method. It's the same loop as in the other games, but we're going to generate the numbers by using the method that we just created, get division numbers. So we're creating a var that will hold the integer array returned by the get division numbers, and then another two variables that will hold the first and second numbers, which will be assigned to the first and second elements of the array. And for that, we use the name of the array followed by square brackets and the index. And don't forget that arrays use a zero-based index. Then everything else is the same as the previous games. We're going to print a message, get the answer from the user using console.readline. And here I'll copy and paste the logic from the multiplication game into the division game, since it's very similar. Just don't forget to change the operator. So let's run our app and see what happens. And we get 60 by 10, which results in an integer. And the same is going to happen with all the other questions. But you can see that we are still printing the system.int32 array. So let's get rid of that console.write line to avoid that. So the functionality for all our games is pretty much finished. But before we continue, let's clean up a little bit because our user interface is very messy at the moment. The first thing I want to do is to change the message after the input. We're going to prompt the user to press a key to see the next question. And we're going to do that for both the correct and incorrect answers. And after the message, we'll have a console.readline so we can get the input from the user. So when we run the app again and input an answer, now we have to press another key to get the next question. And the next thing we're doing is changing the message we're passing when we are calling the game methods. We're going to remove the selected word from the message. And inside the game method, when we create each question, 
we're going to clear the console using the console.clear method. And before we test it, let's add the same logic to all the other games. And when we test it, let's see what happens. Let's start with the division game. I get a new message in a clear console. And then I get the prompt. Same for the second question and the third and the fourth. Quite an easy game so far. And after the last question, I get my game over message. And that's it for the functionality of our games. Now the next step is to store those games so we can see a history of our previous games. And we're going to do that in the next chapter.